Hey guys, what's up? I just want to give you a quick guided demonstration on how to correct the crosser on the first person shooter within Unreal Engine. Um, I'm going to be selecting the first person template just to, so we can all start from the same place. Um, basically the reason for this is because where the first person template, the default gun and weapon system that they give you uses projectiles. So the idea is that the, when the projectile leaves the gun, for the most part at the beginning of its trajectory, it hits the crosshair, but after that it dips and then it, it doesn't really matter anyway, it's not really a dictation of where the projectile is going to go. But when you switch that weapon system to a line trace, which a lot of common FPS games use, um, the crosshair doesn't match up because it is actually adjusted for the projectile. So we're just going to kind of reverse that um, and I will roughly go through uh, setting up the line trace as well. So you get a bit of a bonus there if you've not done the line trace just yet, but we'll get into that. So straight in here, what we're going to do, we're going to open up the first person template. So we'll, we'll select that now. I'm just going to leave my all the settings uh, as default and I'm just going to change the project name to Crosshair. What I'm going to do is uh, create that. This shouldn't take too long, hopefully. Um, this is just initializing and loading up. The first thing what we're going to do is just adjust the crosshair, and I'll explain and show you really um, the example of that of how it matches where the, the projectile goes, and then you know we'll work on the on the the line trace. Right. So we're in the we're in the template now. So as you can see. You know, for, for the most part, the projectile kind of goes towards the, the crosshair and then sort of like dips out as gravity starts to defeat it. Um, now, what we're going to do, I'm just going to open up the third person character. This is more for uh, future proofing, just future proofing. I'm going to use this in just a minute. Uh, then I'm also going to open up the first person hood, which is also in the same folder as the third person character. So they're in the first person BP, blueprints, and then they're in here. So we'll open up the first person uh, hood. Now in blueprints, as you can see, the uh, event received draw hood is called. Then it takes, the, it takes um, an X and a Y of the screen, divides that in half, and then at these coordinates it's then going to draw texture uh, which is actually a line so it's going to be a red cross on the screen so but what you can see here is that there's an offset of size uh, offset size y to align the crosser with the projectile so if we now remove that and just connect up these dots the crosshair is now directly half of the screen's x and y widths and height so now if we play this you'll see it it's more in the center but you won't really notice that until you start firing the gun you'll see that Hang on, the projectile is now nowhere near it. And that's because obviously in your third person character you can see that the gun that shoots, um, that fires, is, actually, is just underneath the camera. Yeah? So it's just a slight bit lower. Now the way that I personally um, set up the, the line trace is that I take the camera's position, get its forward vector and fire straight ahead. So it's kind of like where your head is, where you can see, straight. And that, that kind of works because then it takes into the position of, um, of the camera's angle and I just personally find that I get the best result with that. I'm not saying that that's right, but that's the way I do it and uh, that's how I set it up in all, all of my games. So, just here in the blueprint, what I'm going to do firstly is just I'm just going to disconnect the current fire action. Now, just in case you're not familiar, the fire action, um, which if you were to right click and press fire, is a default, default input action which is set up in the first person um, project and that is under your project settings which if you don't know how to get there you can just go to your main uh, map tab, um, open up your the, the settings cog here and just click on project, uh, project settings. Once you're in there you can go down on the left hand side and you should see import and you can uh, set your action mapping so we've got jump which I think is assigned to space and then you can see we've got fire here, which is assigned to the left mouse button, uh, as well as these other types, uh, which is going to be for the Oculus and you know other other types of input device. But we don't need them right now. So 
We've sorted this, uh, this HUD out, so I'm just going to save that for now and get rid of that because I don't need that. So, input action fire. Now, from there, when we press the fire button, which is 11 miles per second, we want to do a line trace by channel. So, if you can just type in line, it should come up. Scroll down just a tiny little bit, and you see the line trace by channel. Um, I, I'm just going to keep the, like, the, the execute line straight because I don't know if it's OCD, but I actually think it looks neater than it being all over the place. Like okay, so for the place where it's going to start, now what you could do is grab your camera and get its location. Um, if you spell location right. Uh, get its location. But I, I don't actually go that way. I actually get the player camera manager, which bit is a bit more generic because if I grab this camera, it's kind of like I can use this script only on this character because unless I have them all the name the same. But if I just get a camera manager of the player, then it just takes into whatever player it is, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I just find it works better anyway. So I'm going to get the, um, the actor location. I'm also, for the end bit, I'm just going to jump ahead of you and I'm going to get the forward. I have a real difficult time spelling stuff right today. Anyway, I'm going to get the actor's forward uh, vector. So the actor's location is going to be my start and then for my end it's going to be my forward vector. So it's going to be my actor's location. I'm going to add to this, yeah. But then what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to time this by a flow. Now my flow, I'm going to promote to a variable, drag this down, and I'm actually going to rename this weapon range. Weapon range. Okay, I'm just going to compile that, and I'm going to set the weapon range to something. I don't know, 1,500. So what that does creating that variable is if I hadn't have done that, it would have kind of been infinite in a way. It just, the bullet would go forever. But I don't really want that. I really, like, this is how you can determine if I've got a pistol, it can only go, I don't know, a mile before it hits, falls and hits the ground or, I don't know, stops, something like that. Whereas if you've got a sniper, you want it to go a lot further. So this just gives you a bit of control. So I'm going to set it to 1500. Now what that is in relation to a weapon, don't have a clue. But you can tweak that figure yourself and sort that out. So we're going to plug that into the end. And hopefully, if I've done this right, that'll work. Um, so let's just set the draw debug type to for duration. And that's going to draw on the screen now for five seconds. So if I hit something, it should be red. Sorry, if I hit something, it should be green. If I don't hit something, it should be red. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that should be the line trace pretty much on its own. But you know, then what you can do, you can break from whatever you hit, and you can say if I hit the actor enemy, do this, do that. Yeah. But for for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to get into what you do with the results of the line trace, but Hopefully if we compile that now, we should see, hang on, I have messed something up here. So, for duration, draw time 5. What have I messed up? I think I figured it out. So, I actually think I've put these the wrong way around which I usually do something wrong every time that I do this. So I'm pretty sure it's the forward vector, then times the weapon range. Then we take this forward vector, because the forward vector is kind of infinite, and then we're just really, you know, we're, sorry, it's not infinite. The forward vector is in the particular angle that the camera is looking at, but it's like one or zero type thing. So it's one times 1500, so that the answer is 1500. 
So then we're going to plug that into this vector and we're going to add these two together, which is the location and the, where the forward vector would be and then the end of it would be at, at the end of this value. And this should be the end. Now, fingers crossed, this is what the issue was. Um, so now if we play, now we can see that we get a shot wherever we're aiming. And you can see that it's bang on right where the crosshair is. So now what we've done, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, we've adjusted the, the hood. So we've opened up the first person hood. We've took the Y offset for the projectile out. So now that's correct. The crosshair is in the center of the screen. And we've successfully created the basic line trace and a weapon range, just for a Brucey bonus, um, for you to be able to uh, set up your FPS project or uh, whatever that you prefer. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I hope that helps a lot of you. Um, I know it definitely helped me because at the beginning when I did line trace, I was just like, well, what's going on? It must be my line trace. It's, it's broken or whatever. And I spent hours trying to work my uh, line trace to work with it. And you know, you can't really make, well, you can make bad worse, but um, in the long run down the line, it's just not gonna be easy. So um, yeah, as a bonus, you've now set up a line trace, you've got your crosshair to match, and that is all for today. So thank you for watching. Uh, if this was helpful for you, please give me a like and a thumbs up. Um, and if you do want to see more stuff like this, consider subscribing. Um, and, I, and I'll see that as an uh, incentive or a, a hint that you want to see more content. Um, yeah, great stuff. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.